Fractal Define 7XL Massive NAS Build. Now imagine 100 terabytes of NAS storage in this ginormous case. Maybe boasting a Z440 workstation motherboard. That would be incredible. Has anyone done this? I don't think so. Now picture this. The Z420 workstation housing a very cozy 40 terabytes, or maybe it's in a gaming case like this one. Now imagine if we did that with the Z440 motherboard in the Fractal 7XL case. Man, that thing's huge. Powering whatever you seek to do. We could even include 10 gigabit ethernet connectivity. Not to mention a wide selection of motherboards. Z440 is a good choice, but there are others too. We'll check it out. But for now, let's quickly get this case unboxed. I'll be your host, Racer Z. Now check out some of the benefits of this particular case. We've got a large open case design, steel construction, flexible fan mounting, lots of cable management, lots of hard drives, modern GPU friendly, that's a bonus. Removable dust filters, sound dampening all the way through, and diverse motherboard compatibility. Let's dig right in. Quick Stanley Blade. Pretty cool features, loving this case. Okay, let's quickly get through this elegantly packaged case. Check out some of the key features for this motherboard. Absolutely pause if you'd like to view those in more detail. Quite a lot of details there, but very well designed case with a lot of expandability. Absolute thumbs up. Okay, polystyrene's removed. So far, so good. You may have seen the previous video where our uh, case actually got a little bit damaged. Hopefully that's not happened this time. Quick product review. Unfortunately, my Kaiser Bass action cam completely blew up and uh, I've had to upgrade. Yes, Piggy Bank was damaged in this one, but here it is, the GoPro 11 Hero Black. Keep an eye out for a future unboxing video on this very device. That does mean we're gonna have some awesome footage coming up. Oh, sorry, quick phone call, we better take that. Uh, hi there, yeah, make sure to show some footage of the new GoPro. Okay, let's go for Asus Hyper M.2 NVMe adapter. Yes, check that out, awesome footage. Uh, but stay tuned, this will be a future video. For now, let's get back to our Fractal Define. Okay, nice tempered glass, went for the slightly tinted shading here. Probably better to go for the stainless steel panel on, when I say stainless, steel panel on your NUS build, but in this case, we have a lot of flexibility and it gives a little bit of character to that glass panel. But there it is, we have a very elegant design. There's our dust filter. Lots of different configurations on these as well, but that's very, very nicely designed. Quite a nice pattern there as well. Very important to have those dust filters, but let's check what's in the box. We'll see what else is supplied. Accessories. Oh, that's very well laid out. Okay, 7XL user guide. That one's gonna be important. In fact, so important, I'm gonna spend ages reading through it towards the end of the video. Stay tuned for that. Let's go through the bits here. We've got uh, very handy caddies or should we say trays that store our hard drives. So that'll be the 3.5s, even the 2.5s. And we also have our 5.25 inch bay bracket, which is quite useful as well. Now this particular panel here gives us the ability to mount some of those awesome water coolers, particularly on the top end of our case. Not quite sure we'll use this one, but very nice to have the flexibility to include that on our case and nice mesh design there, beautiful pattern. So I definitely think the sealed one is going to win this time just because we're going to set this up as a dedicated NAS machine. What else is in here? Well, this looks quite handy. That must be part of our drive bay covers. Uh, we'll see if we use those. Could be worth installing one of those old master 5.25 inch bays. Now, presumably the accessory box is going to be the most important accessory box here because that's going to contain all our mounting hardware for our motherboards. And I even see some cable ties for some cable management and even a nice cloth. Oh, that looks handy. Oh, perfect. So all the hardware we could imagine is going to be in here just enough to get pretty much anything mounted that we desire. Minus maybe the CPU cooler. So we'll have to get a dedicated cooler for that job. But on to the next step. So this panel is a little bit fragile. Might regret choosing this at some point, but it does add a nice aesthetic. Now, very sturdy mounting latch. In fact, makes me a little nervous removing it. Feels like it might just break on you, so be very delicate on this. But just some nice tabs they pull towards you to remove. Okay, business end. Which motherboard? Well, envisage this, the HPZ 840 motherboard which would actually be pretty well suited in this case. I'm not sure anyone's done that. Well, 
leave that as a dream for now. Maybe it's possible. Tell me in the comments, what do you think? Okay, front fans are looking really well designed. Lots of accessibility there, which is cool. And of course we have a lower dust filter. It also sits really well and is generally really easy to fit. One little hiccup is there's no stopper. So I guess you could over insert that as well, which uh, would be kind of annoying, but no major. You'll see when it sticks out on the far end there, so that's fine. Okay, let's rotate round and I think we're ready for the most important part. The interactions. We have lots of ports up top, which is really handy. Stand out there, the USB-C, but you got two USB-3s and a couple of USB-2.0s. Another dust filter up top. Very, very nice. Take note, they're slightly different in design, top to bottom, but very, very similar patterns. So nice, visually pleasing mesh. Very important to have the mesh in there as well. And obviously we can mount lots of different fans up top, particularly the water cooled radiators. Uh, may not do so on a NAS build, but you may want it for pretty much every other build. Okay, rear panel, let's have a quick look. It's a little bit delicate getting these off, but the latch is quite well designed. Ah, now this is really cool. Check this out. We got an RGB controller built in. That's the Nexus 2 fan hub. Now, not a perfect system, but will give us the ability to run some fans should we choose to do so. And this here is our little adapter, and take note of that. We cannot lose this particular screw because it's captive. Well done, well played. Nothing worse than losing your mounting hardware. Okay, that's re-secured. Very easy to mount lots of SSDs and we have the multi-purpose ones off on the side here. Now this particular panel here will have to be removed if we decide to choose a server setup. That is to install that 18 hard drives, 3.5 drives. That's a lot of hard drives, but perfect for a NAS. Okay, there it is. We've had a very nice gloss through what is a very large and quite heavy case as well. But with the expandability on this, I think it is well worth our time. Now for... I'm going to say a very important point, but if you do not enjoy the user manual, you may want to skip ahead towards the end of the video. But for those who enjoy the user manual, let's go through and figure out all the different configurations that we will have potentially on this machine. Okay, first page there, very well laid out. Loving this manual, by the way. And there it is. We need these particular hard drive bay brackets. Check them out. I picked up a few already because we're going to need it for our hard drive space. But we'll work on that in a future video once we start really assembling this machine. For now, that's looking pretty interesting. Water reservoir. That'd be really cool, particularly if you combine this maybe with a Ryzen motherboard. That'd be awesome to see. But in our case, not that relevant. We're just here for that hard drive storage capacity. But yeah, pretty flexible upper mounting and even front panel mounting for the water coolers. Wow, so many configurations. There it is, the server build. The server build, that's what we're after. Now we should be able to fit at least 18 hard drives in each of those conventional bays, but don't forget about the 5.25 inch bay as well. We would have the ability to run some additional adapters down there. We'll test that out for sure. Okay, what else have we got here? Removal of the rear panel and the front panel. Pretty important details. Power supply, lots of room for pretty powerful power supplies. If you wanted to run something like the Z840 motherboard, you'd probably want to consider also including a 1600 watt power supply, but that's looking pretty beefy. Lots of nice illustrations for how to do this. Now, of course, fitting the motherboard does present a problem, which is that rear plate. And it depends a little bit on the motherboard. Some of them you may have to make a custom cutout, but you can buy those. It's not the end of the world. Lots of adaptability here for our different ports. Those will have to plug in on our motherboard. Uh, hopefully our motherboards are compatible. And a little bit more on that Nexus fan hub. Pretty useful, though it does have a slight limitation with the uh, PWM headers. It may well not be so compatible with the Z840 or any of the HP workstations, but we'll test it out and see if it actually works. And take note, if you are running some of those optical bays, you may want to install them in the slots down the bottom. Okay, optional steps. Let's see, got to be some cool configurations. Okay, dust filters. There's our lower bays. And this one's going to be important. The lower cover there, just so we can install some additional storage bays. I'm going to say that might be useful. So it looks like it just lifts out. That's not too difficult. Uh, yes, this is going to be really important to install those bays. We do have the option to fit that cage and that's going to allow us to install the 5.25 inch devices, uh, which you may want to run and I'd probably run one of the old master adapters if I uh, get the opportunity to do so. They're pretty handy, 
can fit at least, I believe it was four SSDs and at least one 3.5 hard drive. So that's perfect. More dust filters. Ah, yes, really cool. We can actually switch the front face so that it opens in two different directions. That's awesome to see as well. But we'll look into that in more detail in a future video. Okay, lots of other steps here. And we can even install the SSDs in a slightly different location if we so choose to do, which, yeah, could be useful. Extra storage. And otherwise, lots of different storage layouts, those drive brackets, trays, or caddies are really important for this process as well. And oh, check that out. We can even do vertical GPUs. Not going to be relevant for me, but you may want to look into that depending on your end use for this case. Okay, lots of other specifications there. There's details on the potential radiator sizes and the whole water plumbing situation. Could well be worth checking it out. I think this would be perfect for some of the more modern Intel and Ryzen motherboards. Okay, it's looking pretty reasonable. And definitely check out some of the limitations on height. 185 mm for CPU clearance. That is absolutely exceptional. And covers all the standard coolers that you may run into. And more details on the voltage output of that Nexus. Definitely check that out as well if you choose to run RGB. And that's it. The end of our service manual. Now we'll throw you back to the previous unboxing where our case actually arrived damaged. Now thankfully this one's not damaged as far as I can tell. So we don't need to uh, worry about the warranty sticker here. And uh, I think we're up to the next point. Which motherboard? Take note. If we do the Z840 motherboard, proprietary motherboards will require drilling our case most likely. We're going to need some sort of really powerful PSU, but there are some benefits to that. We could run a 1600 watt Platinum uh, ATX PSU, that'd be nice. Lots of expandability on that 840. Now we could also do the Z440, which I think is the front runner at the moment. Relatively new and obviously lots of expandability, similar CPUs to the Z840. And there's only going to be one of them, but still pretty powerful, especially for a NAS build. And don't disregard the Z420 motherboard, that's still an exceptional, exceptional motherboard today. And it's able to handle quite a lot of, uh, should we say, workloads. So still a really, really good motherboard in this day and age. Very tough decisions, hopefully you enjoyed that. That was the unboxing of the Fractal Define 7XL case. Now you may also be interested in this video. You may also like this video. Until next time, hopefully you enjoyed that content. And uh, some bonus footage, the GoPro Hero 11. Doing really well, this is an upcoming video unboxing and testing the Aces Hyper M.2 NVMe adapter. See you on the next one.